Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. So we saw one example in the previous video and I did not continue because then it would get boring. Today we see one more example. So let me first write down the question. This question we've already previously solved once but today the parameters are a little different. Fine. So a thermal power station comprises of three units with the following cost models. So number first is a coal fired station. Number one is a coal fired station coal fired station and the cost model is given as H1 which is equal to 510 plus 7.2 P1 plus 0 0.00142 0 0.00142 P1 squared and then you have unit number 2 and 3 are both oil fired stations so H2 is given which is 310 plus 7.82 P2 plus 0 0.00194 P2 squared and similarly the third one is also an oil fired station having the cost model H3 is 78 plus 7.97 P3 plus 0 0.00482 0 0.00482 P3 squared. The optimal power dispatches are also given 150 to 600 for the first, uh, 100 to 400 for the second and 50 to 200 for the third. Calculate the optimal power generated by each unit supplying at a minimum cost to the load center with a demand of 850 megawatts. demand is 850 megawatts assume the cost of the coal is 0 0.9 rupees cost of coal this time is 0 0.9 rupees per MBTU and the cost of oil is rupees 1 per MBTU so do the calculations do the calculations. What are the calculations? P1, P2, P3 is required. Of course, lambda is required. P1, P2, P3, lambda are the unknowns. So have a look. When previously we saw the same example, we took the cost of coal to be 1.1. And in that case, we got the values of lambda. We got the values of P1, P2 and P3. And they lied within the economical range. The purpose of taking this example today is to, to, to get this out of the economical range, right? Yes. So go stepwise first. Number one you do is what? You take the F function. You need the F function. So F1 would be what? It would be H1 multiplied with X and X for this is 0 0.9. So multiply H1 with 0 0.9 h1 multiplies 0 0.9 would give you f1 and i have it written over here is uh, 459 plus 6.48 459 plus 6.48 times p1 plus 0 0.001278 0 0.001278 p1 whole squared Similarly, F2 would be equal to H2 multiplied 1, so H2 again, and F3 would be H3 multiplied 1, so H3 again. Right? Yes. Next, what do you do? You go for the derivatives. You go for the derivatives. So, DF1 with respect to DP1. Have a look. What do you have? 6.48 plus 2 multiplied with this thing would give you what? 0 0.00. 2556 P1. Similarly, DF2 with respect to DP2, this would give you what? 7.82 plus 0 0.00388 P2. Similarly, DF3 with respect to P3, this would give you 7.97 plus 0 0.00964. 4p3 now this is a lossless system this is a lossless system 
so what do you have is you put df dp equal to lambda and this is the same units the same generating units the same load center so lambda 1 equal to lambda 2 equal to lambda 3 put it equal to lambda put everything equal to lambda from here you can find the value of p1 from here p2 from here p3 can you not find it you can now also the load demand is given so p1 plus p2 plus p3 is equal to the load demand which is 850 megawatts find it out please what do you have p1 is from here is lambda minus 6.48 divided by what divided by 0 0.002 double plus lambda minus 7.82 divided by 0 0.00388 plus lambda minus 7.97 divided by 0 0.00964 and this is equal to 850 megawatts do the calculations please the value of lambda comes out to be what 8.27 the value of lambda comes out to be 8.27 so put it equal now put this values over here this one is basically your p1 this one is your p2 and this one is your p3 so put values of lambda put value of lambda implies what your p1 would be equal to lambda this thing this thing this comes out to be 700.3 700.3 p2 comes out to be by putting in this formula comes out to be 115.97 115.97 p3 comes out to be what putting in this 31.12 31.12 now have a look now have a look p1 economic range maximum is 600 this is coming 700 p2 economic range it is lying in the economic range p3 minimum economic range is 50 it is at 31 violating the conditions violating the the the, the economic dispatch conditions so what do we do i told you if it does like this so you have to take it to the limit that is p1 is having an overshoot this is greater than the maximum value so what do you do is you fix this to 700 you fix this to 700 so i will write it over here that p1 is fixed to 700 fix p1 equal to no not 700 to the maximum limit 600 megawatts p1 is fixed to 600 megawatts now if p1 is fixed to 600 megawatts find the value of lambda from here find the value of lambda from here from this equation so if p1 is fixed to 600 this would imply that lambda is equal to what lambda is equal to 8.0136 8.0136 now if this comes out to be 8.0136 put down this value of lambda in p2 and p3 to find for p2 and p3 so now what happens is this implies that p2 would come equal to what 49.89 and p3 would come equal to what 4.52 have a look is it lying in the economic range no even the second one we've also missed even the second one we have also missed so what do you have what do you have i should not have done it like this now what uh, what other possibility do i have is to fix p1 also at the maximum and put p3 also to the minimum so which means what fix p1 at 600 and p3 at minimum which is 50 so p1 is 600 p3 is 50 isn't it like this it is 
so which means what which means that you have got p1 plus p2 plus p3 equal to 850 so you've got p1 you've got p3 so you have remaining p2 so this would imply this i have fixed okay so this implies what that p2 would be 850 minus 650 so this comes out that p2 would be equal to 200 megawatts p2 would be equal to 200 megawatts now for this calculate the value of lambda from p2 so what do you have you have df2 with respect to p2 at p2 equal to 200 calculate the value of lambda so this implies what that 7.82 plus 0.00388 p2 is 200 the value of lambda comes out to be uh, 8.626 8.626 8.626 this is the value of lambda now this is now the value of lambda now if i have dp1 df1 and dp1 similarly similarly if i also have this similarly if i have what the df1 with respect to dp1 i put p1 equal to 600 the value of lambda comes out from here is what is 8.016 8.016 and similarly if i put it for 3 df3 dp3 add p3 equal to 50 so the value of lambda comes out to be 8.45 8.45 i hope this is clear till here i hope this is clear till here now the conditions that I wrote in one of the previous videos the conditions that I wrote were these that if the power dispatched is lying in the economical limit the power dispatched is if lying in the economical limit the df would respect to dp would equal lambda right yes if the power is generating is at the maximum limit p max so the df with respect to dp this would be equal to less than or equal to lambda similarly if the power generated is lying at the minimum range so the df with respect to dp would be greater than or equal to lambda these were the conditions i wrote and these are the conditions for which i am making this video these are called kun tucker conditions kun tucker conditions i hope the spelling is right so i have to satisfy these conditions i have to satisfy these conditions now have a look lambda for one now this is lambda for plant one so i have fixed it to the maximum i have fixed this to the maximum let me just call it lambda one right so i've fixed one to the maximum 600 so this means that this lambda one should be now by taking the derivative dfdp this should be less than lambda lambda is this one lambda is this one this is dfdp just don't write it as lambda one dfdp if i have put it equal to 600 at the maximum so if i have put the power equal to the maximum so dfdp should be less than or equal to lambda and the lambda is this one so this condition is being satisfied right yes now have a look first of all why have i named this equal to lambda so have a look to the conditions if the power dispatch is at neither of the limit minimum or maximum that is it is lying in the economical range so the dfdp that is the incremental cost will equal lambda so have a look p2 p2 is 200 which is neither at the minimum nor at the maximum so the incremental cost i have named it equal to lambda fine yes now 
if I put the power equal to the maximum limit, in this case I have done for P1, I have put it equal to the maximum limit of 600. So the df dp for that power should be less than or equal to lambda. So have a look, 8.016 is less than 8.626. So which means that this is satisfying the condition. Right? Yes. Now, the final is that if I put a power equal to the minimum limit. So, have a look over here. I have, third, I have done for the third. I have put P3 to the minimum limit of 50. So, for this case, the df dp of that power should be greater than lambda value, which is not the case over here. So, this is not satisfying it. This is not satisfying it. Lambda for 1 is less than lambda. So P1 is at maximum. But for 2 and 3, it is not greater than lambda. So, so which means that P3, you don't put it equal to the minimum limit. If this is not satisfying the condition, which means if I put equal, if I put P3 equal to the minimum, so it is not satisfying the Kuntakar condition. So this means that I will not put it equal to the minimum limit. I will not put it equal to the minimum limit. So which means what? That I only have one variable fix only P1 to 600. Fix only P1 to 600. Fine, which, is, which has satisfied the condition. So DF2 with respect to DP2 gives you what? Gives you this P2. Gives you P2 from here, right? P2 is what? It is lambda minus 7.82 divided by 0 0.00388 similarly p3 comes from here is lambda minus 7.97 divided by 0 0.00964 p1 plus p2 plus p3 is basically 850 right p1 plus p2 plus p3 is 850 over here you only have p1 so this means what that p2 plus p3 the summation of the both would be 850 minus 600 would be 250 p2 plus p3 would be 250 so have a look p2 is this one p3 is this one put down the values can you not find it out have a look lambda minus 7.8 82 divided by 0 0.00388 plus p3 is this one lambda minus 7.97 divided by 0 0.00964 this is equal to 250 calculate the value of lambda from here this is 8.57 this is 8.57 now if this is 8.57 have a look what do you do put it you got P1, P2 put in this values, P2 would come out to be 181.7 megawatts, 181.7 megawatts and P3 would come out to be what? 62.9 megawatts, 62.9 megawatts and P1 you have already fixed which is 600 megawatts and the value of lambda you have calculated from here. P2 181 satisfied, P3 62.9 satisfied, P1 600 maximum satisfied. Now DF1, DP1, DF1, DP1 would be less than lambda or it could be equal to lambda. If you put, now the lambda value is this one. So DF1, DF1 with respect to p1 put down the values in this equation df1 dp1 put down the value for p1 what does this come out to be this comes out to be 8.016 8.016 have a look this is operating at the maximum so this can be less than or equal to lambda have a look this is less than lambda have a look lambda is now 8.57 this is less than lambda so the condition is satisfied df2 with respect to dp2 and similarly df3 with respect to dp3 so put down the values of p2 in this one and p3 in this one what will you get is you will get 8.57 
8.57 and what is that value that is the value of lambda and have a look if you put if the, the, the f1 p1 and p2 are neither at the maximum nor at the minimum so this means what that this will come equal to lambda according to the first contact condition and again we have satisfied right yes so have a look this was a little time consuming we have only got three generating units how about we have 10 generators so what will we do for this sort of problem at this level you won't get this is also a complexer problem if you have what you are given this sort of a question so only one would be out of the range and if you put for example over here if you've got like this so p1 would come out to be 700 p2 and p3 would both be in the ranges so if you put p1 equal to the maximum 600 the other two would also be satisfied this was a little more complex because i wanted you to learn this these are the contacker conditions you should just understand them have a look dfdp would equal to lambda if it is in the economical range it would be less than or equal to lambda if the power is set to maximum and if it would be greater than or equal to lambda if the power is set to the minimum so have a look i hope that you have understood the stepwise solution of it right still if you have any question in your mind you're most welcome in the comment section I will see you in the next video where most probably I have got some remaining examples from the book or we, we, we just directly go to the hydrothermal coordination. Till then take care of yourselves, everyone around you. Do remember me in your prayers. Do subscribe to the channel. Goodbye.